Alright, welcome back to New Touch Designer Tutorial. And in this one we're going to look at speech and music visualization using a nice um, instancing and feedback technique. And yeah, this is quite fun to work with and it's pretty accurate as you can as you might see. And it, all, it works with like it's it, it's working uh, with the audio spectrum but uh, kind of tweaked it a bit and um it it's work it works pretty nicely for more like um you know high higher frequency stuff and it's not so so much based on on the kick sound or like bass sounds right so um as usual i'm just going to get started and um just show you how it's done from scratch right so I'm just going to uh, delete all of this stuff. Um, I am going to leave in these few operators, which is really just an audio file in, so I can show you like a, a song later on, and also my, my voice coming in through the audio device in. So uh, yeah, just set up this to, to your mic, maybe. Uh, that's kind of the most fun, really. And um, I also changed the buffer length to like a thousand samples, uh, just so it's not too laggy right now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add like a math and um, just to make sure that we always have like just one channel and also if we're like I'm just gonna add a switch because we might want to switch the audio uh, device for an audio like for a song for an audio file and um, then we can just do that with a switch and still automatically only have like one channel which is good which is good all right let's uh, add a spectrum which is really like the base for all of this and um, yeah, what I'm going to do here, uh, usually we have this um, mode visualization on, which I'm going to actually leave, but we can like change this to to zero here. We've usually set this to one. I don't know why I talked about this, but <laughs> we've usually set this to one, but we can like turn this down to zero and it looks kind of different, but um, it's a bit more accurate in a way, or like there's a way higher range of like high frequencies, I'd say. Um, I'm also gonna turn up the high frequency boost, and um, then I'm just gonna just gonna leave it this way. Might also actually no, not gonna, just gonna leave it this way. Might actually also want to change this to 16k FFT size, so it's even more accurate if your computer can handle that. It does take a bit of um, time to to compute, um, but that's okay. It'd be like that sometimes. We can uh, also add a math after here, just to so we're like a bit more in control of uh, how loud stuff is. Um, actually, also on this math, I'm I'm just gonna like change the multiply here to two, just so we like have some some higher gain basically. Um, I'm gonna make this red, and again for the second time today, I have forgot to add the interaction display. Uh, yeah, so, and I'm gonna like make this maybe orange in this as well because these are both things where we can like tweak stuff. Then I'm going to add a trim because uh, what we want to do here, I'm gonna change this uh, to a fraction. Uh, what we want to do is I'm just gonna like turn the just cut away 0.7 at the end. So if you have a set to relative uh, to start end, then you can just type in minus 0.7 and then you just cut off 0.7 at the end. Because uh, there's a lot of high range that we don't actually need, so we can just cut off that. And um, in this case, we don't actually have any low end that, that is sort of not used, so we don't need to cut off anything from the start. Um, what I also want to do now is after the trim, add a resample and change this to time slice off and change this to new rate, new interval, um, and absolute, and also change this to samples. And then we can like de determine how many samples we want to have. So in this case, I want to have 29. So like I want to have 30, so I'm changing this to 29. So now we we have our sort of voice here represented in 29 samples, which is nice to work with when we're working with instancing, right? So then I'm going to add a null here, and I'm just going to convert this into tops from a chop to a top. Here I'm not actually going to change anything. We only have one channel, so we can't like change it to RGB. If we did, it's going to display an arrow. Um, and now we just have our voice nicely represented here as one row of like uh, our values. Uh, what, I'm, what I want to have is two different things. I want to have a 
position and I want to have a scale channel. So what I'm going to do is add a noise for uh, my position. And on this noise, what I'm going to do is um, change the RGB to just noise. Turn monochrome off. And to do that, it's like so, you know, right? I turned it off, but it's still monochrome. That's because we have to change the pixel format. We might actually just want to change the pixel format here. So every, anything we like um, connect here is also in 32-bit float RGB, oh, RGBA. I'm going to change the period down to like 0.1. And I'm going to animate this uh, as usual. ABS time dot seconds times point two. Um, for now, we're gonna like animate that with something else later on. Audio, <laughs> spoiler. Um, so I'm gonna turn this to nearest pixel. It's always nice to like a bit better to see. Then I'm gonna add a math change this to like mine like remap this to minus one and one right so we have whatever like we're instancing is sort of centered and then I'm going to add a null and call it pause for position as I so often do then I'm going to add a circle a circle stop and add a transform to it I don't know how many times I've done this now in the last two years <laughs> add a geometry and a camera and a render top. And um, right, so on the render, I don't actually need to do anything. <laughs> I'm just going to add an RGB key here and put that all the way over here because we're going to add quite a bit of stuff here. And add a null, call it BG, and display that. Right, so not much is happening. Um, I also want to add a constant here, so our circle is white. Now we have a big white circle in the center. I'm going to go to my transform and put that down to 0 0.024. So now we have a fairly small circle there in the center. I'm going to turn the viewers off, go to instancing and turn this on. Then I'm going to use my pause for the translate OP. And um, then I'm going to use R and G for um, the position. So now you can see uh, we're just like sort of we have some particles sort of floating around nothing too fancy but uh, kind of fun in, uh, either way. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a level here and a limit, limit. that sounded very odd Still waiting for somebody like uh, making a compilation of all the weird shit I say. <laughs> because I don't cut out a lot, so. Uh, barely anything, really, so. There's a lot to <laughs> make fun of. Right, um, on my level, I'm going to change the brightness to 3, the gamma to 2, and the contrast to 3 as well. So this is all just more saturated, basically. Then I'm gonna go to my uh, limit, because right now, if we're looking here, uh, Turn on D. These values actually go down to zero, so I'm just gonna clamp the shit out of this and just set this to zero. So now we just have like values above zero. And on my math, I'm going to multiply this by like four, and I'm gonna use uh, these scales as a scale. So I'm gonna use R and R. So now when I'm talking, you can see these um, circles respond to my voice in the form of um, uh, in the form of scaling right so uh, yeah slight delay but that's okay right so um, let's get to the fun part where we're actually styling this to make it look a bit more interesting so before I actually add a feedback loop I want to add a, a blur and some displacement so um, let me add a displace top here. And on the blur, uh, I just want to have this very slightly blurred. So it's blurred. So like on uh, two. And on the displace, I'm going to go down to like point two, point zero five. Um, yeah, as the displace weight. I think I just said that. <laughs> I'm gonna add a noise and put that in here. I'm gonna turn this to monochrome. 
And I'm gonna go down with the amplitude at like 0.6. And um, I'm gonna go down with the now period and amplitude to like 0.3, um, the harmonics to like one, and um, the RGB I'm just gonna set to noise. And now you can see we have some sort of displaced, uh, displaced spheres. It doesn't look like circles anymore, right? It looks like this kind of random stuff. Um, I also want to go to my render and actually change the pixel format to 32-bit float. That's going to be taken uh, in here as well. I actually also want to change my resolution. Right, so... Um, cool, this is already fun. Let's make this look a bit cooler. For that, we want to have uh, a few comps and a feedback loop. So I'm going to add one comp and I'm going to add two comp. And I'm going to add a blur from here. Put that into the second comp. And I'm going to add another thing from here, which is a feedback. And always with feedback, I want to have a keyboard in with which I can reset this feedback. So if I press 1, this feedback is being reset. Then I'm going to add a level here and also a, another blur. And I'm going to put this into the first comp. So I'm going to like change the order here. And I'm going to change this to difference. And I'm going to change the second one to a uh, lighter color. But we're going to we're gonna come back to that. So I'm actually going to bypass this because we're just interested in the first sort of feedback loop here. I'm going to drag this comp under the feedback. And now we can already see what's going on here. We already like have some effect happening. So first off, on my, um, on my level, I want to go to opacity and just go down to like 0.995 which is just gonna like make sure um, that my um, forms here, they just disappear over time. Uh, also, I don't wanna be, uh, I wanna have the blur be that strong. So what I'm gonna do is actually go down, uh, it's kind of a nice trick I found out, is go down to uh, with the sample step to like 0.01 on both. And the cool thing now is that we're much more in control of like the, uh, like a fine noise we might actually want to go up a bit with this, but so like the steps of these are like basically a lot smaller, so I can like have a lot more control over how much I want this to be blurred. Actually, I'm gonna just put it up to like quite high, but yeah, this this way you can have a lot more subtle blurs, blur effects. All right, so this is already really cool. Um, what I want to have now is at my uh, comp here. And on this blur, I want to actually have this quite strong. So I'm just going to set it to 4 and like 24. And now you can, we get this cool sort of um, glowing effect because we're like adding um, the blur to to our, like after the feedback loop. So without this, we, we actually kind of see these kind of sort of glitchy parts here, which is also cool, but it's, it's not as cool as this, I think. So this kind of looks like there's this light that's drawing these weird shapes, which I really like. Okay, to uh, make this even more interesting, because it still seems kind of static, right? It seems like you're doing what we're actually doing, right? We're just having these circles kind of things, these shapes, and like drawing stuff. And um, to, to kind of just make this a bit more dynamic, I'm gonna add noise and some more displacement. And um, so first off, we wanna go down on the displacement to like 0 0.05 on both things here. Let's turn the monochrome off. You can already see that always looks much better. So I highly recommend always using a colored input when you're like working with displacement. And um, on my noise, I'm going to go ahead and change the period to like down to 0.4. Go down with the harmonics to zero. And go down with my amplitude to like 0.1. And um, then I'm going to animate this. So I'm gonna go here and animate this abs time dot seconds times point one or something no actually actually let's just do one I think that's okay I might want to actually um, change the periods here I don't know no, point one is, is too fast Something like that. I I don't know. It's 
So it's just basically this way now. It, it just it just moves. Um, ah, right. I know why this looks so weird because we haven't set the RGB output here to just noise. Okay, now it looks uh, much better. And um, yeah, basically we're just um, making the whole thing move, right? You can do this with any any, any image, of course. So um, it just looks looks like the the background is still moving. So the whole thing looks even more three D, I'd say, because it's all kind of like moving, which I just said three times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I think we're kind of kind of done here. Um, you could just uh, like sort of move out with the camera, and if you press one, then it's like sort of the whole thing is more like centered. You can of course change the uh, res resolution and stuff. I just want to show you with like a song uh, of mine that I did at some point. You can all. Uh, whoops. If I switch this to one. Now you can see this um, is not reacting to my voice anymore, but actually to the song. And uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna have to like sit here and wait for the beat to drop, because <laughs> then you can really, really kind of see what's going on. Um, I'm just gonna cue this. All right, but you, I think you get the idea now. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it reacts really nicely. And also there is no lag. Uh, that's just the audio device in if it's creating lag. Um, yeah, so it works super nicely. So yeah, just to, to sort of recap here while we're like changing this, um, I just figured out like, I don't know, this just, it's, it's just a bit different. Like it's, I wouldn't say it's better than turning this to logarithmic scaling, it's just, it's just different really. You can also check out the question mark here to read uh, more about that, but um, I didn't really understand it to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, I can't explain it to you either. Um, right, cool. So if you wanna have more samples, by the way, you can like change the amount of samples here on the end parameter. And of course you can add more stuff here and you could also add, you don't have to do this with circles or, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Feel free to experiment and thanks a lot for watching. And thanks to all the lovely people who are already supporting me on Patreon. And if you also want to support me, then check out Patreon slash Electronaut. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.